Hi everyone. Hi, thank you all for joining us. So hi everyone, thanks for joining today's webinar. I'm Eve Oxbury, I'm the Head of Editorial for Professional Beauty. Um, and today we're live on both Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal International Facebook channels. Um, and that's because we're covering a topic that's definitely relevant to both sides of the market at the moment, uh, probably everybody at the moment, and that is budgeting during an unpredictable time. So we're gonna be looking at how to navigate your salon finances this year. Um, and I'm joined today by Valerie Delforge. Hi Valerie. Hello, good morning everybody. It's really, thank you so much for having me. Really delighted to be talking about one of my favourite subjects, although I always say it's always my favourite subject, but budget is very much the heart of everything. Absolutely, yeah, and certainly on everyone's minds right now. Um, so Valerie, as many of you will know, is a business consultant for the salon and spa sector um, and has also previously run salon and spa operations for groups, including Steiner and Bliss. Um, so really nice hair stuff. Um, so if you've got any questions as we go along, Valerie's going to do a presentation. If you have any questions, do if you're watching in Zoom, just click on the little Q&A box you can see at the bottom of your screen and ask any questions you have. If you're watching over on either of the Facebook pages, then just type any questions in the comments and we will get to them at the end. So for now, I am going to hand over to Valerie and um, I'll pop back in at the end for questions. Thank you, Valerie. Amazing. Thank you so, so much for having me. So I'm going to share my screen. It's always a little bit of a, is this going to work? But it should be okay. Uh, here we go. So I won't see the questions whilst I'm sharing my screen or do the presentation. And as Eve mentioned, we will do this, uh, answer all the questions you have at the end, obviously, of the presentation. And I know I'm talking a lot, so I'm going to make sure we wrap it up within the next half an hour and have enough time for you to discuss everything you want to discuss on budget. So obviously when it comes to budget, um, I guess my background is working, like Eve said, with very big corporates and big spas, big operations. So I had to work with the financial departments uh, on all of these companies for a long time. So analyzing a budget, understanding where my areas of growth are, understanding where it is that I'm spending too much money, really forecasting for the following year with the, with the accountants to make sure that we were on par with everything. So I need to stress that I'm not an accountant. However, I have dealt with budgets all of my career. And that includes being a consultant for the past seven years, working with all of my clients on budget, creating a budget, creating forecasts, on what we want to achieve year on year. So I thought that we have kind of varied audience today. We might have hairdressers, we might have beauty salons, uh, we might have international. So let me go back to the beginning. Let me go really understanding what a budget is and understanding what a budget does for you. So a budget is defined as a financial plan for a prefined period, usually of one year. So we're forecasting and we're really looking at what happens. What do we want to happen next year? So, for example, if your accountant gives you your, your spending for last year, which was, let's say, £200,000, next year we want you to increase your growth by 10%. So next year is going to be £210,000. Where is that 10% going to? Do you want to get an extra receptionist? Do you want to get more stock in? Do you want to get uh, uh, perhaps a little bit more of a, uh, uh, an assistant working with you? So we really understand where are we putting that money, that extra 10%. So really important to analyze and define the budget as we go along, but definitely the forecast. The budget is going to allow you to understand your business inside out, forecasting the costs, what can you afford to, to spend on next year and what can't you afford to spend on, and also your revenue. Hopefully, we will see a growth, but we will talk about the situation as it is now. But on year and year, usually we're forecasting the cost and forecasting what we could potentially achieve. We understand what you are achieving. We understand what is costing you. Perhaps you're spending too much money in a certain areas. Perhaps you are overstaffed. Perhaps you have too much stock. We understand how you operate. So when I see a budget, 
I, I see how you operate. I see how your mindset works. I see perhaps you don't want to have too much uh, um, kind of cost on, on uh, um, let's say, training because you believe that that's not going to be the focus next year. You've got an established team. Perhaps you want to focus on marketing more. So we understand the pattern. There's a pattern in your spending. And a lot of time when I work with clients, we look at this, the pattern being a bit of an emotional pattern. You know, I wanted this brand. I got it. I wanted this talk i got it so we really get to know when there's a budget really defined budget to understand what can when can you invest we in, we understand the investment that you can make a must however when it comes to budgeting is we should review it monthly we should look at the figures and that's what i do with my clients every single beginning of the month we review what happened last month how much did we spend on what was it part of the budget or is has something occurred that suddenly you had to spend more money on something so we review that monthly budget we analyze the income. Where is it coming from? How is the, perf the performance of the staff? We follow the spending. Very, very important to follow that spending. As I said, perhaps you had something to spend on the boiler or something that needed to attention. So what can we do this next month to make sure you don't spend too much and you reduce those costs? We forecast for the year ahead, which for me is very, very important, but also agreeing with your accountant on the figures. One of the key elements with accountants is very few, very few will give you a budget. They will give you the end of the year. They will tell you how much you've spent. They will tell you how much you've got in income. And they will tell you you've got X amount of profit. Or perhaps you didn't have profits last year. So when you look at the X amount of profit, let's say £30,000 worth of profit, suddenly you're thinking, I can't see it in my bank account. Where is it gone? Um, that's because they don't necessarily analyze the cash flow. They don't give your budget exactly what you can spend for the following year. Very few do it. So it becomes a little bit uh, um, difficult and a lot of clients that I meet basically knows that they supposedly have uh, an, uh, uh, you know, some money coming in or they have some profit but actually can't see it in their bank account. So we analyze that, we're forecasting for the year ahead. We're really dividing every single area of expenditure. We revisit the suppliers. We, we are aware of the hidden costs, for example, your treatment costs, for example, the towels, for example, anything to do that's going to give you an extra, the PPE at the moment. So all the hidden costs are really analyzed and understood. And we analyze your return on investment, which I feel we don't necessarily do automatically. So if you're investing in a new machine, for example, obviously the supplier will tell you, you can have that much money uh, within the year because but have we? Have we actually made a return on investment on everything that we've done? Even if it's a staff member, are they profitable for you? So all of that is an analysis that should be done monthly and definitely quarterly and definitely yearly. So it's something that's underlined. For me, a budget is the heart of your business. Before I do even everything, I create a budget with my clients because then I can really understand how they function. You're all different. You're all different. You all have different priorities. <clears throat> but it gives me a clear idea of where you are at the business and how can we move forward for the following year. So I'll give you a few examples. But most of all, as far as I'm concerned, a budget is a mindset, is your mindset. Do you feel a little bit deflated? Do you feel a little bit on top of things? Do you feel like the cash flow is not coming in and it's really tight and you go home and you feel really just, just everything is an expenditure and nothing's coming in enough? You know, it's a mindset. The budget is a mindset. Are you taking calculated risk or are you making emotional decisions constantly? And that's where really I'm calming my clients down and like, okay, every decision is going to be a financial decision. It's going to be a decision that will allow you to make sure that you have a return on investment. You know, for me, a budget would be that you need to take the emotions out because you look at your business as a business, as a working venture, not that your heart and soul into it, which is difficult when you've put, you've created your baby, you've created something amazing that is for yourself. So I like to really take that emotion out of the financial element, because once you look at the business as a 
working business, you will find that your, your way of thinking about the budget will be very, very pragmatic, more, more systematic rather than, you know, uh, emotional. There are no right and wrong in the budget. If you decide to spend a lot of, you know, 10% of your budget on, on education, that's what you decide to do. Some clients, for example, decide to pay themselves a, a high salary and have less profit. That's fine as well. Everything is fine as long as it's calculated and as long as we've taken that risk that is uh, making sense for what comes out of your money. And to me, it's a vision for the future. So that vision that you have, whatever you want to build, how you want to build it, comes out of the budget. So when I do a pre-opening, for example, for a new business, a new salon or a new group, uh, et cetera, it's all about the budget. How much can we afford to spend on what? How many minimum skeleton stuff can we have to make it work? How can I cover my costs to achieve that vision for the future? And the problem at the moment is obviously that vision is a little bit blurry. So the budget becomes a little bit of a stress. So very, very important to focus on understanding what your expenses are. The budget, as far as I'm concerned, comes in three expenses. You've got your staff cost, which is the highest cost within your business. You've got your fixed cost, which are things that perhaps we can't do too much about, but there are elements of the fixed cost that we can look into. For example, the insurances, for example, looking at the business rates at the moment. So there are things that we can do with the fixed cost. And then you've got your variable cost and the variable cost includes your stock, your stock expenses. It could also include, include anything to do with your marketing. So that's your variable. So how do we, you know, that could fluctuate from months on months, basically. There are three budgets within those expenses that we really need to focus on. And in particular at the moment, um, number one is the staff profitability. How profitable your staff is to what you, uh, you want them to be. So that profitability, which since the virus has been a little bit up and down, isn't it? We don't quite know how to look for that profitability. How, what should they be doing? Uh, especially if we're not sure about how many clients come through the door. The second budget to look for, and I am obsessed with that, and all my clients will tell you, is stock control. Because I know with a strong stock control, I can and I'm able to reduce my costs dramatically. So to me, it's a budget that I really, really focus on. And the third one is the marketing. Because somehow we do spend money on marketing, and marketing is bringing the buzz into the, the business. And if we have a budget purely for marketing, it allows us to be able to grow and bring in that machine, that old machine, to make sure that we've got the buzz into the business. So they're the three budgets that I really focus on and I need to, once we create the budget sheet, I'm aware of what we can and can't do on those three budgets. So let's look at those a little bit as an audit, just to give you an example of my thought process when I look at a budget and those three key budgets. So the staff costs. Uh, staff costs within salons is about 35%. Now, the hairdressing salon will argue that it can go down to 25%, absolutely. From hair to beauty, you have very different expenses and it's far more costly. And this is why when I work with hairdressers client who have got beauty, they're a little bit unaware and a bit shocked at the expenses that we have in beauty. It costs far more to have to do a treatments, for example, and much longer. We can't generate as much money than you can do on the shop floor with hair. So up to 35% within salons. In spas, it can go up to 50%. And obviously, all this includes NI and pension. When we look at the staff cost, however, I look at also the room or, or the chair occupancy. For a room to start being profitable and for me to be able to hire somebody, I want that room to be at least 60% occupied. Otherwise, there's no point hiring. It's going to increase my cost on HR and I will actually not be, uh, you know, what can I do with that room? And that we look at that on a year to year basis. Perhaps we should rent that room out because it's not generating enough money. Perhaps we should be looking at, um, uh, uh, making sure that that room becomes something more practical. 
or another, uh, another investment on something else if we can. With the chair occupancy, for it to start being profitable, it's about 40% occupancy. Now, a lot of softwares will not give you that, that number. It's not very practical for them to create that number. But you can look at it yourself with, uh, for example, on an hour, on 10 hours opening, how many hours is that room or that chair full? Or, or used. That's, that's the occupancy of that. Alongside of the room occupancy or the chair occupancy, we then look at the staff performance, which is 80% uh, for occupancy rate, which is the ideal number. 80% occupancy rate for the staff. I would like them to have 20% retail rate. And that it can be a little bit rare, but that's what why we do here at the Delphos Group all of this energy on retail culture and ideally we want them to cover three and a half times their salary to cover the costs and the overheads however this all depends on the treatments that you are generating and it all depends on the time you're giving that staff to generate those clients for example if you do a manicure at 30 pounds for 45 minutes you're losing out and your staff will not be able to do three and a half times their salary. So it's all about calculating, really calculating in fine tooth comb exactly what goes on with the staff performance. We then have uh, stock control. And I'm obsessed with stock control because through the lockdown in particular, you know, I was talking to a lot of people uh, that were kind of looking at this talk a little bit more in fine tooth comb. And for me, the stock control needs to be between 8 to 12% of your total cost, no more than that. So if you have £200,000 worth of cost, 12% will be on stock. So it's very little. It is feasible with hair, perhaps uh, hair clients with brow bars or nail bars for it to be at 8% cost. When I talk about stock, I talk about professional, retail and consumables. Consumables being all your towels, uh, throwaway towels, not the actual towels, throwaway towels. It could be tissues, it could be uh, cotton buds, that kind of thing. We do need to look at revisiting suppliers. When was the last time you did that? And for me, for your cash flow, and I can't insist enough on that, I would rather you did small, consistent orders because they are much better for the cash flow. So what I make my client do is, for example, you do the stock take on a Monday and on a, on a Monday night or Tuesday morning, you do an order, you'll then get your invoice and then you pay it and that's it. That's like an old machine. It's constant. Small, consistent orders will allow you to not overspend on your stock and it will allow you to make sure that you don't overspend over 12%. Obviously, this all about the creation of uh, securities and systems around the stock, in particular with hairdressers and the colors that you're using, that's where you're losing the most money. Uh, with beauty, it's all the overspending on nail colors, for example, or facial treatments sometimes that have duplication of products. So we really look at that. And we've created a uh, stock control module that's available on the website if you felt that you needed to take that control again. Um, treatment audit with treatment, you, I'm sure you all know, we're looking at one pound per minute. So it should be 60 pounds or 60 euro or $60 for 60 minutes, as simple as that. However, if you can't do that because you, you're unable to suddenly put a, you know, a, a treatment at 60 pounds when it's been 40 pounds for an hour, it's very difficult for your clients to see that. Revisit the minutes. So I was talking about the manicure, for example, 30 pounds for 45 minutes. You are losing out. You're not on your pound per minute. So perhaps revisit the time and the protocols. Maybe do the manicure in half an hour for 30 pounds. And now you've got your pound per minute. And that's really, really important to look at that literally treatment by treatment and allocate that, look at the stock allocation for those treatments. Do you still have some stock sitting on your shelves that actually should be shifting for some of the treatments or what can we do with that stock? So very, very important for the treatment audit. And the marketing as a budget that I'm focusing on, usually I'm looking at 5% of your total revenue. Um, it's quite interesting for some of you to outsource it for consistency. 
We again review it quarterly because it allows us what do we want to happen the next quarter, how we're we going to make happen the, the following three months. So for example, in October, I will be working on January, February, March, uh, a marketing plan and understanding all of the expenses I have around that marketing plan. For example, if you create a launch, uh, for me, let's say you're creating a launch of a new, new treatment, um, I would separate that launch from the budget. So any product I buy from that launch goes onto my marketing budget. If I ask the staff to do overtime, it goes onto my marketing budget. So it becomes a strong, healthy understanding whether that marketing activity has worked, that launch has worked, and how much have I spent realistically on that launch. And that's when I analyze my return on investment. So we're going to navigate through the sea world because that's why you're here today. This is, was really a basic understanding of the budget. And um, for me, the budget is very much a mindset. And at the moment, all the clients that I'm meeting and people I'm talking to, there's a sense of loss. There's a sense of, ah, I had my business up there and now I feel like I'm having to rebuild it all again. I'm used to generate, you know, £10,000 a week. Now I'm only generating five. So it's just that sense of loss. And a lot of you that I'm talking to, and this is where the problem occurs when it comes to budgeting, is we're stopping our growth. We're basically stopping the growth to go further because we're scared of the unknown. You know, we're scared of, of what's going to happen. So the fear overtakes your thought process when it comes to budget. Time management is overwhelming. Everything falls back on you. I'm talking to people who say, well, I may as well go back because I don't want to invest in someone new or I may as well go back and do a lot of uh, uh, treatment myself. And that's where it becomes very heavy. And we look at the budget and cash flow, feeling really down, feeling really stressed about that budget. So where it goes wrong, and this is why we, we need to start analyzing bit by bit the, uh, the, 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 your budget is usually we have team members that are not profitable within a team. If you find that your cash flow and your budget is tight, that means some team members might not be profitable and that's something you need to look at. Your fixed costs might not be revisited. When was the last time you looked for new insurance? When was the last time you looked for a new phone, et cetera? So phone supplier, et cetera. The stock management a lot of time is non-existent or it is, but it's not tight enough. So we're still overspending on stock. And I can give you some horror stories on stock where actually if we did it properly, you would save so much more money. We guesstimate a little bit what's going on uh, with the uh, budget and we wait for the yearly account. So the accountant gives you that end of the year, uh, let's say in December, and is telling you you've spent that much money and you've made that much profit, but you can't see it in your account. So it's that guesstimation. A lot of people I meet actually don't really even analyze what the accountant gives them. There's no monthly review, there's no target given, and especially at the moment, why, why give a target? We don't know what's going to happen with the clients. So it's all a very much a little bit blurry as far as I can see. And there's a huge mismanagement of cash flow. Now, we could be a very busy business, but your cash flow is non existent. And unfortunately, that will bring you down dramatically. So, cash flow is all about the management of what comes in and what goes out. If everything was coming out on the 31st and coming in on the 1st, it will be a lot easier. We'll know how much money we've got left for the month. But unfortunately, it's managing that cash flow that becomes perhaps a little bit difficult and a heartache. So there's a disparity between reality and profit. As I said, your accountant might tell you you're in profit, but you can't see it in your bank account. You know, you've got sporadic monitoring as and when you've got time. We don't really study the cash flow. We kind of know we've got enough perhaps to spend uh, to pay for the VAT, but we've not put that money aside. So we're not quite sure. And it becomes, that's what I mean by mindset. It becomes very heavy on the mind because we constantly worry about the next step, you know, the next VAT bill. We're paying the bills as and when we can rather than have a regular, which is what I try to do with the stock. You know, every Monday or Tuesday, we pay that bill is done and we know it's done for the week. And we, it all creates a sense of lack. 
you know, when the cash flow is tight and when we really worry about that next bill, it's that sense of lacking money, lacking uh, clients. And that mindset generates a huge impact on your leadership. So that's why it's so important, as far as I'm concerned, to look at the areas of growth. And I'm looking at the time because I want to be on time for you. I know I talk a lot, but please do ask me any questions at the end. Obviously, a lot of you have reopened with a new treatment menu. You've looked at your yearly price increase. Some of you haven't increased the prices, but perhaps it's time to look at the uh, price increase, even if it's not for now, even if it's for January, to make sure that you're not losing because all the suppliers might have put their, their prices up. Staff return opening hours has been reviewed. I feel sometimes, and when I talk to a lot of clients or new clients, I feel sometimes it's a little bit shy on the staff return opening hours. We kind of feel, well, the team might not want to, but I really feel now it's a little bit like a buyer's market, isn't it? Uh, it is a salon owner's market. You have got the opportunity and this is why when we start looking at opportunities rather than feeling very heavy with the cash flow and the budget to to do what you need to do so i've got a salon a client who's opening at eight o'clock in the morning with having two teams team a in the morning team in the afternoon and it works really well and she's realizing a lot of people want that morning uh, appointment so don't be afraid of really looking at the opening hours and the staff rotation, in particular with what's going on at the moment in the UK anyway, uh, uh, with the end of the furlough at the end of October. The retail culture for me is very important. If anyone knows me, I love retail. I'm obsessed with retail. I know it's going to be an extra revenue that is easy. And we have done with my trainer, Terry, uh, a, a few mystery shops since the opening. And we've been quite shocked how little we've been talked about retail. It wasn't before the, the lockdown anyway, but now it's literally non-existent. And the customer journey becomes sometimes a little bit cold. So therefore, we're not pushing the retail at all. An area of growth as well is your treatment costs. Uh, for sure, they need to be revisited and viewed in a fine tooth comb, really one by one. Uh, the loyalty scheme, I feel that at the moment, uh, again, when we went to do those mystery shop, no one really tried to either rebook us or getting us involved in the loyalty scheme. And yet at the moment with everything that goes on, keeping that customer loyal should be your only priority and your reception or your therapist or your hairdresser's priority. We want to engage that client to come back again and again to you. Your time management is crucial. I meet so many people that are scared for the future that they keep telling me, oh, I'm going to go back. Oh, I'll open my column again. Why? Why are we doing that? Because that is going to to be detrimental to you in the long run. Remember what you've built up to now. That sense of loss, of course, is so difficult to kind of overcome sometimes, but it doesn't mean you need to go back to what it was. It means that perhaps you need to adjust the budget so it works for you, not against you. And that's an analyze of the figures for sure that allows you to understand that your time will be well spent in doing everything on the business rather than in the business. You know, your marketing and your training elements is still needs to happen. And unfortunately, in terms of crisis or in times of crisis, a lot of people stop the marketing because maybe they can't afford it. They haven't got time because they're doing all the treatments. Uh, training is cut down left, right and center. And I always feel that actually, if we're gonna invest in something, marketing and training should be even more in the upfront of your budget. And your vision should be revisited because what I'm finding at the moment, talking to a lot of people, we've got the second spike, we feel very, very blurry with where we're going. But let's take that magic one. Where do you want to go in five years? How are we going to achieve that dream in five years or two years or three years? Just to give you that hook, that, that lease of life. I was talking to someone this morning who was telling, you know, telling me I'm still going to invest in this machine because I still believe it's going to answer my clients' uh, uh, results, um, what they want, etc. And good, as long as it's counted for, as long as we've got the budget for the marketing and training, as long as we know what we we're spending and we're going to calculate the return on investment why not why not but it's all going to be going to be down to your vision so the do's and the don'ts the do's is very much creating a monthly cost spreadsheet that is so important that's going to allow you to understand 
what happens and it's like what I call a live budget where it's more or less your cash flow where you understanding what comes in next month what comes out next month what can we forecast in terms of treatment increase your HR expenses if needed you know I'm, I'm talking to a lot of people I'm going to cut 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 I'm too scared but actually when you look at the figures your occupancy is high your occupancy is on 80 to 90 percent why should we decrease the HR expenses make sure you've got valid contracts make sure you look at the contracts that are valid for you maybe it's only a six hour contract maybe it's only a saturday you are in charge it is a salon owner's dream at the moment because you can really focus on what you want rather than feeling dictated by everything you are in charge and in control so don't be afraid as long as it's, if it's done again on an emotional element that's where the stress come in everything to me has to be black and white figures analyze and if we take out the emotion out every decision becomes a financial decision which will be so much better for both your mindset and also the future of your business you know reflect on what you want to achieve it goes back to your vision minimize the hours and the days if you have to by person by staff member if you have to and look at the small tiny changes that will make a big difference in the long run when i'm saying to my client look you've spent 15 percent on stock i want you to reduce it next month by by five percent so we're back on track you know and maybe it's only two three hundred pounds that they've overspent but actually that two three hundred pounds if you multiply that by 12 months it ends up being a lot of money so we've got to look at all those small changes that make a huge difference in the long run and at the moment all i keep saying is ride this wave we're going to ride this wave to come out on the other side with a much stronger budget much stronger mindset around the figures and really focus on what you can achieve if you've got that passion back into achieving that for your business. The don't is don't stop your growth. Be very careful of that, that scare factor, but if I don't, et cetera, be very careful of that. Don't keep the flossy. If anyone knows me, you will know that flossy is your difficult staff member, the one that's not really performing, or perhaps they are high performers. Usually they're one that are a little bit difficult, but give you a bit of a bad taste in the morning until she comes and have a coffee. She doesn't talk to anyone. You know, I'm not having any of that. We have been flossing the flosses out of the businesses I'm looking after because enough is enough. It's your turn to have the business that you want. You don't have time to think of all the emotional. Obviously, we need to do it properly and in the HR point of view. Don't avoid the number crunching. It's really important that you understand your figures inside out. Don't assume anything, everything. You know, I remember when I was doing a marketing activity, came to the salon and said, okay, so have we done with that marketing? It was a, a gift. Oh my God, it was good. It was good. Buy two, get a gift. It was so good. Went downstairs, had a look at the computer and actually there was two people that bought it, but it was the receptionist that had uh, that had served them so she was telling me it was amazing and busy but actually black and white figures told me otherwise and don't stop analyzing analyzing is great it makes you feel on top of your business it makes you less far less emotional whoo i can't believe eve i'm getting better and better it's uh, half an hour 30 minutes we do have a stock control course available at the delphosgroup.co.uk we also have express modules available for the budget as well that really goes in fine details about how to calculate your budget and i'm offering everybody that wants to have a little chat with me a 30 minutes free consultation you simply have to get in touch with us uh, have a look on the delphosgroup.co.uk and we, we you can uh, send us a little uh, message so uh, eve i've done quite well i think in half an hour you have. Thank you, Valerie. That was fantastic. It was, really, <laughs> it was a great overview of, of budgeting, but also some of the really kind of difficult things that I think people are thinking about at the moment. So thank you. That was fab. Thank you so much. So uh, have we got any? I can see a few, uh, a few things on the chat. Yeah, we've had a lovely comment just pop up. Fabulous as always, Valerie. So that's lovely. <laughs> but yeah, we've had a couple of questions through. Um, one thing that you touched on very briefly was the end of furlough and i think this is something that people are quite concerned about at the moment um a bit nervous about it coming to an end completely what um steps should people be taking now to prepare for that or if there is anything that they should have done that they that they might not have thought of 
it goes back to analyzing the performance of your of your staff and go back to analyzing your opening hours really really important are your opening hours still valid is your staff performing on the hours that you've given them flexi fellow has really helped a lot of businesses it's been great because it's been more flexible it's been a little bit more uh, easy to handle in some respect depending on the accountant i have to say some accountants were a bit more rigid um, but it's been a lot easier to kind of decide on a day-to-day -day, on a week-to-week -week basis what can you afford and what can't you and how busy are you uh, if you were so this particular end of October we're going to have it's fairly similar but it's a little bit more rigid it's not so flexible so you're going to have to really analyze the, uh, the, the definitely the staff performance and uh, for sure the occupancy of the of the rooms or your chairs but please, please look at your opening hours. You'll be surprised that perhaps something that you've been wanting to do for a long time, I don't know, opening Sundays or opening earlier, opening later, might be time perhaps for October to look into it to see if there is a demand. Absolutely. Bad, thank you. Um, another question that's just popped up is, can you talk about someone who wants to work from home? Um, so how can they be more motivated and, and gain profit? Okay, so from home, what do we mean? Is that someone who's um, having clients at home? Yeah, I think a, a freelance therapist or, or hairstylist who wants to see their clients at home. Yes. Um, that's uh, motivation, obviously, that's going back down to the vision. What are you visioning uh, yourself? To do what is it that you want to do by the end of next year it doesn't have to be a five-year plan it's just you know what do you want by the end of next year um so motivation is always kind of leadership and i think i'm finding it amazing sometimes maybe i need to do something for leaders when you're on your own because you're still a leader i believe we're all leaders you're a leader of your life leader of your professional life your personal life so therefore it goes back to your mindset and what you want to achieve in terms of the clients at home you know it goes back to the budget how many clients can you afford to have how many is that a day do you want to have open every single day or do you want to be you know starting at eight o'clock in the morning and finish earlier a lot of time when we are on our own we let all of the client dictate to us when they want you but actually you will find that if your marketing and your your um you know you're very strong at your budget and you understand what goes out and what goes in you're the one dictating your diary and people will come to you anyway the problem when you're on your own we tend to say yes to everything because we're scared that someone might not want you but that is the wrong mindset in the long run because you'll end up creating a business that runs around them rather than it run around you. And God knows when you're going to have a, a, a free weekend again. So it's really important to go back to the budget. How many clients, how much is all the cost? How many clients do you want? You, can you have a week? What all opening hours do you want to create? Create it like a business. It doesn't matter if you're at home or, or not. What is it that you want? How do you want to make it? And if someone really wants you, they will find that time. I hope that answered. Yeah, I think so. That's fair. Um, another question we've had is, where can I look to cut costs? So I think you mentioned a lot of people initially look at um, cutting marketing or training, and that's probably not the best place to start. So if, if people really do need to start cutting costs, what are the areas that they can be looking at? Where should they think to, to begin? Stock, 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 stock. stock. <laughs> Stock, <laughs> number one, because I guarantee you, if you do your calculation of stock, you're probably overspending. Very few are not overspending. If you're very good at stock, and maybe I'm wrong, and I like to be proven wrong because that means you're on top of things. So, you know, it's good. It's good if you're on top of your, of your thing. Then it's looking at your staff. Are they all occupied? Are they all definitely, um, you know, are they all really profitable? Um, perhaps it's looking at your reception, unfortunately, at the moment are suffering a little bit, your reception, if you have receptionists, you know, do you need all the hours covered? Uh, but again, I'm really wary about doing that and doing, doing that panic decision without looking at the budget because next thing you know, you're the one having to do reception on the days you really didn't want to. So be very aware of that. But um, yeah, for me, it's all the stock marketing training marketing training for me is important to have something going on but maybe you have a uh someone that is doing your um social media let's say she's costing you 400 pound a day 
Oh, Dave. No, I'll just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> Maybe she's quoting you 400 pounds a month. You know, is there someone in uh, that can help you that's a little bit cheaper, or can you take that over, or the receptionist take that over? So I would really look at those elements of, uh, you know, practicality, but also. Um, you know, in the long run, don't forget the long run. I feel at the moment we're very short-sighted. That's why we forget, you know, that scare factor, like very short-sighted. Let's just don't forget. All it is at the moment is riding that wave, covering your costs so you can ride that wave. And that's all I keep telling my clients. Look, at the moment we're covering the costs, we're riding the wave. Think of next year, what we're going to do next year, how we're going to, and having that mindset creates much more a relaxed um, a view on your figures and your cash flow. And it's amazing how the mindset affects the cash flow. Yeah, no, that's great advice because I think at the moment, particularly, people are, are scared to make changes, aren't they? Because things seem to be changing on a daily basis. So you don't want to make anything, any kind of big decision that might not be the right thing a few months down the line. A hundred percent. But you know, like anything, is there a wrong or right thing? You might have made a decision two years ago of buying a, a, a machine, let's say, but actually it's gathering dust because the marketing wasn't strong enough behind it. So mm -hmm. there's always decisions that we make on a yearly basis, regardless of the virus or not, that might not be the right thing in the long run. But what is important at the moment is to make sure that the business cover the cost, get a little bit of cash flow on the back of it, and making sure that you are still thinking on your on your uh, profitability in the long run. Yeah. And I think at the moment we're so scared. You know, I was talking to someone yesterday. She said, "Oh, well, it's fine because I'm going to cover. You know, I'm I'm, I'm going to go back and open my columns again." you want to you haven't done that for two years do you really want to is that necessary is having someone for 12 hours going to cost you that much if we start working on you know the 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 the, uh, the customer journey the customer loyalty you know when we did the mystery shop i went to a hairdresser um which before it's a lot it's it's, it's, it's it's kind of was a lot of money for my hair i don't do it that often it's a balayage but you know you come in you have a head massage you know you choose the oil next thing you know you've got a champagne oh my god it's so lovely and then it cuts your hair that money that I was spending you know was just it had the value of making me feel amazing and then I was you know kind of you know mentioned the shampoo I could have etc going back after lockdown none of that obviously because we can't do it but on top of that the price have increased but on top of that there's no retail that's been introduced to me and on top of that there's no customer loyalty so mm -hmm. where are we losing here are we losing because we've not thought of that customer journey in the long run and we've been focused on pp and making the money so much when actually what is the client looking for at the moment is that amazing experience still despite the pp yeah making those small changes the small uh, uh looking reviewing the customer journey will impact on your on your uh, budget because supposedly they're not spending money on oil for the head massage they're not spending money on champagne for the champagne so how can you make me feel super special so i want to come back to you mm, absolutely so kind of finding ways around these issues i think that's it and i think uh, we've had another question about um Doing a similar thing, I suppose, for your team, because you mentioned it's a salon owner's market at the moment, but on the other hand, salon owners need to want to hold on to good people in the, in the long run in their team. So um, do you have any advice on kind of achieving that balance? You know, obviously you need to make tough decisions. You may need to change their hours, but how can you keep a team motivated <laughs> during this difficult period of doing that? very hard, but I have found that we're dealing with less flosses, you know, the difficult staff member. I have found a lot of team are very, very supportive of the employers. I think a lot of team, and that, that needs to be said. I think they've been very flexible since the closure, you know, since we closed. Um, there was a lot of things during lockdown. Oh, they're sitting down, they're getting paid. I, I didn't always agree with that. I feel that there was a, an element of sort of them maybe not feeling comfortable with what, with what was going on and wanting to help. So since we've opened, you know, most of the teams I'm dealing with, there's no issue. They're very flexible. If we need to cut hours, we will, whatever it takes to survive. Um, so I feel that um, unfortunately there are some difficult decisions to make. I was talking to someone last week where unfortunately she might have to lose a couple of her very good team members. And that's, that's where the heartache is, isn't it? That's 
very, very difficult. They, there's nothing wrong with them. But can we review everybody's, and it all depends, it goes back to the contracts that you've set. You know, can we review the hours so we reduce the hours for everybody and it's a team effort? Or is it that we have got to lose or two member of staff? But it is the survival of the fittest at the moment, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know it, it's riding the wave so you can come out on the other hand so eventually you can re-employ them again you know that's that's kind of for me yes it's, it's hard and our decisions at the moment since 2020 has been very difficult on the mindset but it's sometimes making the decision to step back to go forward again once we uh, once we can excellent Thank you, Valerie. I think we're pretty much up to time, but thank you so much. That's been really, really interesting. I think some great, um, great information for whoever, whatever kind of business you run. I know we've got hair salon owners and beauty salon owners watching. So thank you. That's a fantastic advice. It's, it's a little snippet of how I think about budget. Uh, don't hesitate to send us questions if you have as well in between, because I know people will look on replay, but don't hesitate. This just a little thought process about budget but a lot of time talk to your accountant ask them to create a budget for the following year sometimes that does work and that does help you or get in touch i'd be happy to review your budget and look into it a little bit with you to understand where you're perhaps overspending and what you should be looking at excellent well thank you very much valerie Delforge, for joining us um, and we've got plenty more webinars coming up both on professional beauty and hairdressers journal international so check out our websites for the lineup for those and we'll see you all soon thank you, thank you so much for having me see you soon